Hello and uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm Raghavendran and I'm a research consultant and mentor with Amix Logics. I'm trained in bioinformatics and I hold a, hold a PhD in computational biology from Max Planck Institute of Germany. My research interests are mainly uh, on data science techniques such as machine learning and deep learning methods applied to integration of transcript, transcriptomic data with the other multi-omics profiles such as somatic mutation, copy number variation and others, et cetera. Uh, to understand cancer genomics and in the field of neurological disorders and also to study plant bioinformatics. Uh, please let me talk about one such example where I developed machine learning models to predict tumor responses to a variety of treatment options, primarily using transcriptomic data and also when transcriptomic gene expression data was supplemented with mutation data and copy number variation data. So to go into that, we have to uh, get some background. So we know that cancer is the leading cause of uh, disease deaths worldwide. So for such a dreadful disease, systematic cancer treatments uh, have relied on chemotherapeutic, uh, chemotherapeutic drugs that are marginally toxic to cancer cells than normal cells. This is a huge problem because on an average, only 25% of the cancer patients respond to such cancer drugs and such cancer treatments. So in comparison, about 80% of the patients respond uh, positively to popular painkillers that are available in the market. So one prominent solution to this problem uh, is precision oncological therapy, where the treatment strategy is designed by targeting the molecular characteristics of patient's tumor. Hence, the treatment is personalized to patients who are likely to respond to specific cancer therapies. But there is not sufficiently enough data from cancer patients to molecularly characterize tumor under a multitude of different uh, treatment options. So we have to rely on suitable model system. Uh, you may have had a, a very good introduction to patient data genograph model system from Ilya Brodsky's talk, but let me cover it a little briefly here. So we have covered why we have to do such a study and uh, um, how, how is that done? Uh, the tumor cells from the cancer patients are subjected to next-gen sequencing methods and techniques and the information about gene expression data and gene mutation data and epigenetic variation data and copy number variation data are all extracted. These data molecularly characterize the tumors and these tumor samples are then grafted into immunosuppressed mouse and administered several cancer drugs. These mouse or mice models are called as patient-derived xenograft models. And then when these tumor, uh, when these uh, mouse or mice models are, um, uh, are given different treatment profiles, their tumor response to the respective drugs are documented. And this data records the tumor's reaction to different treatments. So both the molecular characterization data and the treatment response data are available with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the publication published by Novartis. So such a lot of data, such a wealthy of data generates a lot of research questions. And my interest was specifically to use this data to design and implement machine learning models to predict tumor response to different treatments. So what did we find? So first we find that the traditional use of using a single gene biomarker to predict tumor's response to any given treatment was not uh, accurate enough at all. That you can see from, the, uh, from this part of the graph where the accuracy of the model increases as it approaches one and uh, decreases uh, when, when it approaches minus one. So traditional model of single gene uh, markers did not accurately predict uh, the treatment responses of breast cancer to these multitude of different treatments. But when such a traditional model was, uh, sorry, when, uh, when I use, uh, instead of one gene model, okay, when I use, uh, instead of a single gene model, uh, but a multitude of gene models and supplement it with the transcriptomic uh, profile data and copy number variation data and uh, gene mutation data. So what I observe is most of the, what I observe is most of the prediction accuracies lie on the north side of the 0 0.5, which is regarded as a very good accuracy for such a uh, limited data set. So that is also seen in the distribution of the accuracy across the treatments, which is so scattered when I use single gene uh, mutation data, which is traditionally used to multi-omics integration data, which I, uh, for which the machine learning model was developed. So mm, what more can be done with such a, such a question and such a data? So a gene set, gene set enrichment analysis can be performed on the most informative genes uh, that are uh, identified from machine learning analysis. And then this can be extrapolated to study and identify specific biomarkers that can predict and help us understand tumor's response to different treatments. And one can also extend such an analysis to include patient's data from TCG repository. 
and that would reveal us interesting insights into performance of the machine learning models that are trained on preclinical data, but tested on real world patient data. And hope this example was very informative and inspiring for you all to generate interesting research questions. To perform such an analysis, coding was an interesting, I mean, was an integral part for me. But if one lacks or one is restricted in coding experience, that should not deter them from asking such interesting questions. And this is where I think Omics Logic Platform bridges that gap by providing the necessary training modules and also necessary platform required to perform such impactful research. And I thank you for thank you all.